Hi, everyone. My name is Ashley Griffin. I want to thank everyone for listening, and thank you to the Wellife Organization for asking me to speak. I'm keenly aware of how lucky I am to be the voice and representative for millions of people who have experienced sexual trauma. Statistically, that likely includes many of you watching. It's a great responsibility, and I'm honored to have a platform to speak about this. I didn't set out to write a play about sexual trauma. I wanted to write about the complex nature of forgiveness because I was angry and tired of feeling afraid to use my voice. I was tired of feeling I needed to be quiet and maintain the status quo so that others wouldn't be uncomfortable. This is a subject matter that affects me personally. And I believe it's the job of an artist to help the world look at and examine uncomfortable truths. Kierkegaard says, what is a poet? An unhappy man who hides deep anguish in his heart, but whose lips are so formed that when the sigh and cry pass through them, it sounds like lovely music. And people flock around the poet and say, sing again soon. That is, may new sufferings torment your soul, but your lips be fashioned as before. For the cry would only frighten us, but the music, that is blissful. I have not seen anyone in the theater world, much less in the entertainment world at large, dealing with this issue. And that isn't right. We need the music to make dark things bearable, to know that we're not alone. And if no one else that I saw was going to do it, then I decided I would. Love, faith, justice, and mercy in the face of this kind of trauma are issues I don't see discussed, certainly not in all their complexity. That makes me sad, and it makes me angry. The cry costs the artist dearly, but I believe the music is a matter of life and death. I'm so happy to be partnering with Well Life. I've discovered the Well Life Network to be a wonderful resource of compassionate caring and hope to individuals who are survivors of sexual trauma, one that helps them find a place of peace and peace of mind on their journey to wellness. The support they provide for survivors of sexual trauma, especially children, is incredibly vital. This is an issue that is often swept under the rug. People don't want or don't know how to talk about it, and getting help depends on having the resources to find and obtain it. Trying to do so can often be a traumatic battle in itself. That's why this organization is of dire importance. Giving people the tools to be able to deal with their trauma, letting them know they're not alone, and most importantly, having a safe place to go shouldn't be luxuries. I didn't have anywhere I could go to be safe. And I wish desperately that I did. One of the things that Well Life asked me to address is how parents can be proactive in preventing their children from being sexually traumatized and become survivors. This question hit me really hard because the truth is, there's no simple answer to it. And that's a terrifying thing to face. Sexual trauma comes in a million different forms, including having a parent who is the assailant in the first place. My advice, keeping in mind that it's coming from my own unique and personal experience, is this. Be an example for your child in every way of what a loving, respectful, and trusting person should be. We want to protect our children, but often the best way to protect them is by empowering them to see and face the world as it is, for all its good and bad. To educate them. Be the kind of person they can talk to. Don't let uncomfortable or scary things become taboo. We need to teach children how to be confident enough to make decisions irrespective of outside influence. But their worth is not tied to any negative thing that might happen to them. Listen to your children. Sometimes they don't know how to verbalize the things that they want to say. And if they have been traumatized, believe them. Tell your children you love them. Tell them it's not their fault. Tell them that they did exactly what they had to do to survive the experience. And that is something to celebrate about themselves. Their trauma isn't going to magically go away. But like coal becoming a diamond, it can be transformed into something beautiful and strong. Let them know that they will always have power over their lives, even if it's just in how to deal with and move on from their experience. Holocaust and concentration camp survivor Viktor Frankl said, everything in life can be taken from you, 
except for one thing, your freedom to choose how you will respond to the situation. It was challenging deciding what to say to you today. As a writer and performer, I'm supposed to be good with words. <laughs> and I wish I felt free to speak completely openly. But the truth is, my assaulter is still out there. And there's a possibility that they may see this. And that could be dangerous for me. There are people my whole life who have claimed what I went through didn't really happen. I still feel that I have to censor my words. And that breaks my heart. Surviving is hard. To be honest, there are days I wish I hadn't survived. It would be a lot easier. We like to give simple platitudes about forgiveness, but forgiveness is anything but simple. It's easy to look at someone, say they survived, and celebrate a happily ever after. But I'm still in the midst of my story, and surviving is an action I perform every moment of every day, not something I accomplished long ago. I think it's important to acknowledge the complexity of that. It is a far more beautiful thing to celebrate. I was asked to end with any general thoughts I'd like to share with you. This is what I felt called to say, and I would like to begin by quoting something from a new piece that I'm working on. It is not popular knowledge that every person receives a fairy gift or two when they are born. It is not a rare occurrence reserved only for the christenings of select princes and princesses whose parents can garner the goodwill of the fairies, a sort of prize that can be invited and cajoled on behalf of progeny who have a great important destiny to fulfill. No. For every person is a chosen one in a way. Their unique necessity ever present in the minds of the spirits. And each one is bestowed with fantastic gifts, as unique in combination as each person's unique calling and need of them. The difficulty is that unlike princes and princesses, we do not all get a glorious christening day at which our gifts are bestowed and celebrated. They are not announced by heralds, and that makes them surprisingly easy to ignore, negate, or attempt to snuff out altogether. Yes, each person is the hero of a very particular story, and they must be equipped for that story as any epic hero might. In fairy tales, demons often attempt to steal magical gifts, but in real life, they have so perfected the art that now they have not much work to simply convince the majority of the population that they have no magical gifts in the first place, or almost worse, that the ones they have are really quite pathetic and not worth much of anything at all. Then there is no battle for their magic. But it can never be taken. Not really. A little tinge of it is always left. A fairy gift can never be truly reversed or washed away. You may not have had a christening with golden plates and heralds, but you were given fairy gifts. Do not forget what they are. I think about you, about everyone watching this, and I think of a group of people who have been blessed with many gifts. I've not had the pleasure to meet you individually to know what your personal gifts might be, but as a whole, I believe you have gifts in common. You've all been given miraculous power, the power of influence, of knowledge, of freedom. The fact that you're watching this means you have access to resources others and other generations could only imagine. I'm speaking to you from the United States of America, one of the most prosperous countries in the world where we are fortunate enough to have freedom of speech. If I may call you to something, to ask for your help, it would be to use your gifts in service of those who don't believe they have any, to remind them of their power and worth to show them love. Those who cause trauma often inadvertently teach their victims that that's how people will always be. Show them that the opposite is true. This cannot stay a taboo topic. And whether it's in support of this wonderful organization or simply in creating a dialogue within your own circle, I would ask you to be an instrument of love. Anyone you meet could be a silent survivor. 
Keep that in the back of your mind as you go about your day. Perhaps you yourself are a survivor or are experiencing trauma in your life now. If that's the case, I say to you, you are not alone. You are loved. You are worthy. And please forgive me if you don't believe in God. I do very much. That worth comes from being a child of God. It comes from that indescribable essence of you. What is left when your job, your relationships, your money, your accolades are stripped away. And it is the most beautiful part of you. The only part that truly matters. I would like to close in the same way Fred Rogers of Mr. Rogers' Neighborhood closed his 1997 Emmy acceptance speech. He said, So many people have helped me come to this night. Some of you are here. Some are far away. Some are even in heaven. All of us have special ones who have loved us into being. Would you just take along with me 10 seconds to think of the people who have helped you become who you are, those who have cared about you and wanted what was best for you in life. 10 seconds of silence. I'll watch the time. Whomever you've been thinking about, how pleased they must be to know the difference you feel they've made. What that person has been to you, I would like to challenge all of us to go out into the world with the determination, the joy, the grace to be that for someone else. I believe in forgiveness. I believe that love wins. Let us work toward the proof of that in our own lives and all the lives we encounter and affect every day. May God be with you. Thank you.